Today we talk about work, energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, and we talk about uh, conservative forces, non-conservative forces, and uh, power. So these two chapters really go hand in hand. So here's how work is officially defined. Work is defined as the dot product, as the integral of the dot product of the force that you apply to something dotted into the displacement vector, the displacement vector that you make that move. Okay? So I remember when I first was uh, talking to you about this uh, way back in chapter one or chapter two, I was talking about units and I was talking about vectors and scalars. One of the things I said to you is that um, when you define something the way it is, or when you make a certain, when you uh, uh, write a certain equation, it's got to conform to the laws of uh, vector and scalar multiplication. Remember that? I said if you add a vector to a vector, you get a vector. If you dot product two vectors, you get a scalar. So uh, that's one of the things that we got to, so uh, the work is defined to be a scalar quantity. Because it's the dot product of two vectors, so work is a scalar. And its units are Newton meter. So you're applying a certain amount of force to an object, and you're dragging it a certain distance in meters, OK? And that is defined as a joule. And then in the uh, British unit system, it would be a foot pound. Uh, you uh, apply a certain amount of pounds of force to something and drag it a certain distance in feet. Later on, uh, when we look at power, we're going to see power is defined as work divided by time. So that's its definition. So if work is a scalar, time is a scalar. You divide scalar, you get a scalar. So power is also defined as a scalar. And its units are joule per second, joule per second, which is abbreviated as a watt. So we're giving these certain abbreviations named after the scientists who did a lot of work in that field. Joule is a scientist, watt is a scientist. Uh, and then the, for the foot pound, we, uh, it would be foot pound per second would be the British unit system. And for that one, the abbreviation we use is horsepower, 500, 550 foot pound per second is one horsepower. And in America, we often use things in horsepower, like the car, uh, car horsepower is like 200 horsepower or 300 horsepower. Or you buy a motor, like, um, let's say, a saw, a chainsaw, an electric chainsaw. You're going to cut your tree down or something. Usually, they would be about one or two horsepower. Or the motor that cleans your, uh, dr uh, does your pool, your system, you know, drains your pool and everything. Those would be all be in horsepower in America, okay? So it's good to know what, how por horsepower works and how horsepower is connected with uh, watts, their relationship. Um, okay, now let's look here. Well, why, we'll add it, why, why don't we uh, look here, what is the connection between horsepower? So while we're at it, let's give you the conversion here. If horsepower is 550, foot pound per second. Now don't ask me why that's the way it is. I haven't really delved into all the history of that. That would be an interesting thing to see. How, why is horsepower defined as that? Maybe there was a horse in the Middle Ages that was able to carry 550 pounds of force and it was able to run at one foot per second, right? So that's how they define it. So there's probably history behind that. So uh, if I want to go from here, I could say 5,280 feet 
is one mile. One mile is 1.6 kilometers. One kilometer is a thousand meters. This is a good practice in unit conversion. 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. And one kilogram is 9.8 newtons, okay? And I believe that will do it. This will cancel the mile. Kilometer will cancel the kilometer. Pounds will cancel the pounds. Feet will cancel the feet. I'll be left with Newton meter per second, which is a, uh, a watt, right? So uh, one horsepower will be equal to 550 divided by 5280 times 1.6 times 1,000 times uh, divided by 2.2 times 9.8 watts. So what is all that? Seven hundred. So that's the answer, one horsepower. So if you buy a motor that's two horsepower, it would be 1,400 watts, you know. So uh, if you go to usually like uh, European countries or something, the, the machines there, everything, everything will be scaled in watts. And if you go in America, it will be in horsepower. Sometimes we have like if you go to a hardware store, they might have something that was brought from Germany or something. So the box will have it in watts. They won't even have horsepower. So if you're only used to horsepower, then you can do your little conversion yourself, you know, so if it's if it's if one of the boxes let's say says 3000 watts so divided by 742 so that's about four horsepower and then you have another box that says three horsepower you know which one is the stronger right so it's a kind of practical to know that um, okay now let's go back to the work <clears throat> So now let's talk about a little bit about why we even define such a thing as work. Because I want to show you kind of like the idea behind it. Where does it come from? Why do we even care, care about work? If we have a simple, simple problem, let's say just a block, and let's say there's no friction, and there was a force applied to the object, uh, 10 newtons of force, and let's say it was uh, 2 kilograms, and it was dragged for 15 meters. Okay, so let's say the problem asked me find V final. Okay, now how would we do this? Well, if there was no such thing as work and we hadn't even talked about that, you could do this problem from simply a Newton's law approach, right? You can say F equals MA. So with Newton's law approach, the, old, the idea is always like this. Tell me all the forces on the object. Find the acceleration of the object. And once you get the acceleration of the object, use the, law, the, the equations of kinematics to find the V final. Right? So with Newton's law, you always have to find the A first. Okay? So in this case, the normal force is canceling with its weight, mg. So we don't care about that. They're just canceling each other. And then if you, uh, for the force 10 Newtons,